We are in our fourth week, eighth hour, 53rd minute, <laughs> 12th second and half a split second into our Get Gillard campaign. And it's time to welcome the Prime Minister of Australia, the very first female Prime Minister on top of that, Julia Gillard. Welcome to Hobart. Say hi. <laughs> I'm here. You've got me. It's worked. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, because we want to know... Are you the real Julia Gillard? <laughs> Definitely. Good. Could you have, you have, have you seen the actress that plays you or, do, or goes around doing rounds as you? Uh, I have seen um, some impersonation on TV, but this is the real person. Good. Now, Julia Gillard, uh, you are one hard, tough lady to get a hold of. You've been playing hard to get, so much so, in fact, that I've never seen Maddie try and call a girl so or a lady so many times <laughs> in his life. Well, I was working on the basis that absence might be making Maddie's heart grow fonder. And it has. I've... And it has. You see, it's worked. Julia, I, I honestly have never worked as hard to have a chat with a lady, and it's been a tough road. But I tell you what, I guess the harder it is, the more the achievement feels like it was worth doing. <laughs> So you're feeling good now? That's oh, a great thing. Feeling relieved. We're gonna... Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> he won't call you again now, though, Julia. Oh, now that you've rung. That's harsh. Oh, I know it is. Sorry. Oh, what I want to ask you about being the first female Prime Minister of Australia, what is it like being charge of, in charge of a country of men? <laughs> well, fortunately, we're a country of men and women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously, my focus at the moment is on that all-important election day on the 21st. So I'm getting to go around the country uh, talking about all of the things I want to change for the future and deliver for the future and nothing more important than the National Broadband Network here in Tasmania and that's why I'm here today. I'm going to uh, be switching on the commercial services. There are people in Tassie already using the National Broadband Network. We want to keep rolling out around the country. Of course, Tony Abbott wants to shut all of that down. Speaking of Tony Abbott, did you see him on the 7.30 project the other night when he was asked about broadband? This is what he said. That I'm no Bill Gates here uh, and I don't claim to be any kind of a tech head. Do you know what peak speed is? Uh, again, uh, if, if you're going to get me into a technical argument, uh, I'm going to lose it. Um, do you know what broadband is, Julia Gillard? <laughs> look, I do know what broadband is, and I think the point for Tony Abbott... Uh, look, I'm not going to criticise him because he's not uh, going to hold himself out as a technical expert. That's not the problem. Uh, the problem is, as Prime Minister, he would make the judgement call to not build the National Broadband Network. That's the problem. So I don't ask him to be a technician, uh, but the, the real issue here is if he's elected, no more national broadband network, whereas if I am re-elected, we will keep delivering the national broadband network, and I think it's so exciting for Tasmania that the delivery is rolling out here and people are already connected and Tasmania is showing the rest of the country what it's going to look like and how it can be done. Tony Abbott, just on him, um, if you become Prime Minister again, uh, will you have the budgie smugglers banned? I've contemplated that, but, you know, I've come down on the side of civil liberties and people being able to choose what they wear, though we do hope that people make smart choices. It wasn't the best look on Tony Abbott, though, was it? <laughs> Uh, I'll let others speculate about that. I don't think we've seen the budgie smugglers out for a while, though, have we? Thank no, goodness. And my brother's a professional triathlete, and he reckons his time was rubbish. He reckons he's not an Ironman, he's a finisher. But that's a... Oh. <laughs> that's what my brother just calls anyone that does a certain time, not an Ironman, a finisher. He thinks that word gets used too much. I watched the People's Forum last night, Rudy Hill RSL Club, a room full of apparently undecided voters. I was watching that. I wasn't too sure if they were so undecided. Um, but... The big issue last night, of course, Julie, you spoke first and then Tony got to speak second and everyone's made a big deal out of you sitting on a chair opposed to Tony Abbott. He was on the floor and it reminds... I don't know, if, have, have you watched much Seinfeld, Julie? Uh, I have watched Seinfeld, yes. It reminded me of this moment. Have they ever offered you a chair? No. <laughs> would you like a chair? I suppose if they gave me one, I'd sit down. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You would, wouldn't you? Obviously, I'd rather sit than stand, if that's what you're asking. That's exactly my point. Well, who wouldn't? And I couldn't believe everyone was making a big deal, because, Julia, if I was offered a chair, I'm taking the chair. 
Well, look, I did walk out on stage and there were two stools and David Spears, the uh, moderator, was going to sit on one, so I sat on the other. I'm always happy to uh, wander through and have a talk to people uh, face-to-face. I've been doing a lot of that during this campaign. Uh, And during this campaign, I'd have to say... Uh, Mr Abbott's taken a pretty different approach. He's still doing the traditional style of campaigning, which is mostly very closely staged, managed events and not out with voters. I believe businesses like IKEA are concerned if he does become Prime Minister because of his issue with chairs. <laughs> I, mean, just... I, I have seen Tony Abbott sit down, so, oh, so he's not... I, I, don't, I don't think it's a profound objection He's chairs. not chairist then. OK, <laughs> good to know. He's not to... chairist. <laughs> Isn't that what men are supposed to do anyway? Stand for the lady? Anyway, let's move on. Julia Gillard, we have been um, trying to chase you for over a month now, as Maddie said. Can we replay some of the things we've done for you? Terrific. First of all, we had Premier David Bartlett, a good mate of yours, I believe. Well, that's how he sells it anyway. (laughs) And and he's absolutely right about that. He is a good mate. Good. We asked him for your mobile number. I do have her number in my phone, but I'm not sure that ringing the Prime Minister uh, by surprise is protocolagorically correct. And uh, so he didn't hand over your mobile number. So we went to the white pages. We did a bit of research. We found out you went to Mitcham Primary in South Australia. That's true. Wanted to know if we could get any leads there. Well, no, there's no one around that was here when she was here. So. <laughs> we should have expected that, shouldn't we, Julia? <laughs> I, I was there quite a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, your, uh, your, uh, your sister's name is Alison, is that correct? That's right. We found an A. Gillard in an area in South Australia where we believed she lived, so we called her. We're a different Gillard. They live in Pasadena, which is close. (laughs) It just gets even better, though. We even wrote a song for you, Julia. Better or worse? We'll let Julia decide. Okay. What about Southern Tassie? It isn't fair. (laughs) She's gone. (laughs) We we shortened that, and I think you'll thank us for that later. (laughs) Well, look, after all of those efforts, I'm here. I think your persistence has paid off. Oh, so, there's, there's, uh, I think there's about if, two more efforts. <laughs> <laughs> two more efforts? Yeah, have you spoken to Wayne Swan recently? Because he was down here announcing the Super GP Clinic in Rosny and we took a sign that said, please, Julia, give us a call, 13 12 16. Because he's cutting a lot of other things. Can you get we might Julia, leave it at that. Can you get Julia to call the Baton Woody Show? <laughs> Mr Swan, please. I'm happy to call the Baton Woody Show. <laughs> And you know what? Not only did he call, he actually came into the studio, Julia. So oh, he's a good man. A man of his word. But our final thing came down to Premier David Bartlett again. Yeah, it's sort of, I guess the chase came full circle, didn't it? Because it started with Dave, he's a good friend of the Matt and Woody show. And then we're getting a bit desperate, so we thought he's going to our go-to man. And we made, um, now I think you'll be particularly proud of this, uh, Julia, we made T-shirts up. Now they only cost about six bucks each. And we didn't have a big budget, so we got the iron-on we'll words. Send, we'll send one to Canberra. <laughs> And this was Julia. Please call CFM's Matt and Woody Show 13, 12, 16. And the Premier, he was loving it. Maddie, would you please present the oh. very first T-shirt oh. to Premier... This is a special moment. David. David. Oh, 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 oh that's Julia, beautiful. Julia, please call CFM's Matt and Woody now. 13, 12, 16 with a little CFM thing down the bottom. Because I'm going to take a photo of this and send it to Julia. And did he send yeah, your picture he said of he was, that? He said he was doing that live on air. Uh, David Bartlett actually has been texting me <laughs> about the campaign, so he's... Uh, acted as your agent and made sure that I knew what was happening. Oh, he's a good man. He's a very good man. And he's a Manchester United supporter, which just gives everyone 10% in their personality. (laughs) We even did, and this is just really quickly, we even did things like a commercial for you, Julia Gillard, and we even (laughs) sent an email to your partner, Tim Matheson. Oh, really? He he was smart enough not to reply. We don't blame him for that. It It actually proves that he's a clever guy. (laughs) <laughs> well, I didn't hear about that. So <laughs> David Bartlett has been texting, texting me, but uh, Tim didn't tell me about the email. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good man, Bartlett, and uh, we have got you on the show. Can we finally say to Southern Tassie, to Hobart, that we have got Gillard? You can certainly say, after all of that effort, you've got Gillard. <laughs> What a great day it is for Hobart. The only problem is now, Julia, what are we going to do for the next 10 minutes of the show? (laughs) (laughs) It's like we built everything on this. Now we've got nothing. Oh, I think you two are going to be able to come up with something else. I'm backing you in. Thank you so much, Julia, and thank you for talking to Hobart this morning. And uh, hopefully you enjoy your stay. And great, 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 great for having you. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity and good luck with the election. 
Thank you very much. The Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard, joining us on the show. What a great lady. It's nine to nine. Oh. 100.9 CFM. Wow. Breathe it's a like sigh. It's like the end of a marathon. Isn't it? What do we do now? Stick around and we'll find out.